Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you all had a good Christmas break. I know I certainly did. I just now need to stock up on enough eggnog to get me through the next, say, 11 months. Or until they bring it out again. In other news though, I still have one last present to open. And this is a present from a very special, very awesome person. It's me. I bought this. And I'm sure whatever it is, is going to be the most exciting thing I've ever bought for this channel. Okay, maybe not that interesting. It's just a set of drill bits, but it's still interesting to me. Although I'm not exactly sure what that says about me though. More specifically though, this is a set of reduced shank drills. I think I've always known them as silver and deming, or I guess deming drills, but I'm pretty sure that's just a brand name. In the same way that Jacob's Chuck is a brand name, and I just tend to throw it out at anything that looks like a Jacob's Chuck. And in no way are these brand name jewels because, well, as you can probably tell by the title of the video, these are just no-name imports. Now, it's been a while since I've bought a no-name imports at a tooling, and, I don't know, I'm already having my doubts about it. I specifically remember ordering a metric set, mostly because I do live in the modern industrial world, but unless they've developed metric inches and I didn't get the memo, I'm pretty sure they've sent me an imperial set. Now, a few years ago, I probably would have held these out the window as fast as I could, never to see them again. But having done this hobby long enough, I think it is inevitable that I will run into Imperial parts and tooling here and there. Either by choice or not. Okay, let's be serious, it's never by choice. But my point is, I am more receptive to using these. With that said though, I'm still not that great at converting between the two off the top of my head, so I'm just going to write down the conversions on the outside of the box. Perfect. So as I was saying before, this is a set of reduced shank drill bits. And the reason why I bought them is, well, because you can use them in most drill chucks. For example, this is a one inch drill. What's that? Roughly 25 and a half millimeters. And I don't think any normal chuck could hold that. But since the shank is half an inch or so, it can. It probably does make for a weaker drill since there is less metal sort of at the end where you hold it. But if we keep the fees and speeds realistic, and we keep the materials sort of on the softer end, we should be okay. And the overarching reason for buying them is, well, to drill bigger holes. You know, it's not unusual to need a 20, 30 or 40 millimeter hole in a part. And if the largest drill that I currently have is say 13, 15 millimeters, well, we're going to be spending a lot of time here boring a hole out when, well, I could simply be drilling it. And at least on the lathe, that is going to be a lot quicker. Unsurprisingly though, tooling, especially large bits of tooling, tend to be quite expensive. I had a look at some Sutton brand drills, you know, they're made here in Australia. And for the price of one of their drills, I could get this whole set with money left over. Don't get me wrong though, they are really good drills. You know, you do get a good quality drill for what you pay for. And in fact, most of my drills are Sutton's but the price they wanted was a little bit steep for me, especially considering that all of this is a hobby. So what I eventually settled on was I'd buy the cheap set from China, and whichever drills got used the most would eventually be replaced with good quality sudden drills, either reduced shank, or more appropriately, probably Morse taper drills. And judging by the look of things so far, that day is probably gonna come sooner rather than later, because these drills, well, they're not looking good. I'm sure you can probably see it on camera, but these drills look like they've been thrown out of a window or something, because they're just full of chips and cut marks and dents. In fact, in some of them, there are just chips outright missing. And it's like that in every single one of these drill bits. And it must have happened near the end of production, because there are dents in all the nicely ground parts of the tool. You know, those aren't light scratches, and in some weird way, I'm actually impressed at just how banged up these drills are. You know, in my spare time, I like to watch those machining videos from India and Pakistan. 
I'm pretty sure most of you have seen videos like that. And whilst I don't want to comment on the machining itself, but I swear in half of them, they do take their newly machined parts and throw them on the ground. I know it's probably a joke of some sort, but it seems like that's what they've done here. And just to put it into perspective, this drill here is 30 years old and it doesn't look half as bad as these brand new drill bits. Anywho, I'm more focused on if slash how these things drill and if they do drill a hole, that's gotta be a pass. Looking at the cutting edge, I guess it looks fine. You know, it looks like every other drill bit I've ever seen, but I have been full before. I'm sure these drill bits work fine in wood, although as I'm demonstrating here, this is not really the type of drill you'd normally use for wood. I'm sure if you're doing wood a lot, you'd use like a Forstner or a speedball bit, but will it work in steel? That is the big question. So let's jump right in with the one inch cutter and see what it can do. I have a piece of 20mm long cold rolled. You know, this is what I turn 90% of the time. And according to the black book, I want just under 400 RPM. And it looks like we're getting nowhere quickly. You know, the web, that bit at the front, that's not really doing much cutting, seems to be our main issue here. So I'll give the hole a pilot so the cutting edge can do all the cutting. Now we're definitely getting somewhere, which is a big improvement than before, but I'm still not impressed with those chips. You know, they're thin and wispy, rather than long chips, which is what I'm used to seeing, so I'd wager the cutting edge needs to be reground. And I don't know how well you can see it on the video, but it looks like the back edge behind the cutting edge, it was rubbing up against the workpiece, which shouldn't be happening. Now, I'm hardly the world's greatest drill sharpener. You know, it's probably a lot easier to sharpen a big drill like this than a small one, but it's not too different to the lathe tools that I grind. I just need to make it helical, and both cutting edges need to be symmetrical. Okay, I won't be winning any drill bit sharpening awards this year, but as I demonstrated before, looks aren't everything. And immediately I can tell that is night and day better than it was before. You know, at least it is properly cutting and we are getting some nice chips. Although I still haven't gotten it perfect. You know, one side is doing most of the cutting and one side still isn't producing the chips I'd want, so I'll probably have to go back and give it another regrind. And that is certainly getting to a point that I'm happy with. You know, I wouldn't mind a slightly nicer surface finish on the inside. However, given what I bought these for, I'd almost certainly be using these as sort of a roughing tool, and then I'll always come in afterwards and bore it out to the fold I mentioned. However, I still wouldn't mind getting a nicer surface finish the first time round. All in all though, this is still gonna be a lot faster than going in with a smaller drill bit and having to widen it out to one inch. So yeah, this set might actually be paying off. However, and this is a big however, that hole is measuring about half a millimeter undersized, which for even a twist drill is quite a big discrepancy. You know, the box, it states that this is a one inch drill. The packaging list says this is a one inch drill and it even has one inch stamped on the drill bit itself. But the calipers, well, they're saying this is a 25 millimeter drill, which is a little bit odd. Maybe this is actually a metric set after all, or maybe they made this from 25mm stock and just stamped one inch on it either way. I don't know. But by that logic, it's quite possible that all the other jewels are metric too. So I went ahead and measured them, you know, top and bottom of the flutes to see if there was any taper. And, you know, I genuinely have no idea what's going on here. I mean, they are all over the place. So let's get this started. So 5 sixteenths was almost 24 millimeters. And that would have confirmed my suspicions about them using metric because 13 sixteenths and 7 eighths are exactly 20 and 22 millimeters. 
However, three quarters is 18 and a half. So that's also in the realm of possibilities that they just made this from 18 and a half millimeter stock. But even stranger, 11 sixteenths and 9 sixteenths are 17.8 and 13.8 millimeters. So yeah, I, I genuinely have no clue where they got that number from. And just to throw something else in the works, as it turns out, the 5.8's drill is exactly spot on size. I know, just, well, I can tell you are all astonished. So yeah, if you have an idea of where they got these dimensions from, I would really like to know. But this is just a mess. You know, 8 drill bits, only 1 correct, 5 undersized by as much as 0.64 millimeters, and 2 oversized. Now again, I bought all of these for roughing, and you know the holes are going to get bored to their final diameter, but it is a really poor showing. You know, I would expect my drill bits to be at least somewhat on size. With all that out of the way, the final thing I want to do is just see how this drill goes up against, say, a good quality drill. And for that I have my Frost Brand 5 8 inch Deming bit. You've all seen this one here on the channel, you know, up until getting these, they were my biggest drill bits. And you know, this one here is probably 20 or 30 years old at this point, and this one here is good quality because it was made here in Australia. So what I'll do is I'll put this up against the import drill and see, well, how does it go? First things first though, I am going to regrind it because I just don't trust the factory grind. Okay, so the black book says we can do this at about 600 RPM. And the import drill is definitely not liking that speed. There's tons of resonance in the cut and it just wasn't cutting like I'd like it to. And dropping the speed back worked, but there is still some rubbing going on. And I suspect that it's on that side edge. You know, I don't know everything about drill bits and their grinding, but I do know that's not supposed to happen. So what I eventually did was I took a stone and I tried to remove some of the material off that backside, you know, off the edge, to hopefully prevent it from rubbing. And the result wasn't perfect, but it seemed to work a lot better than it did before. So with that drill now running, well, better, let's see how it compares to the frost one. And by the stopwatch, they actually finished within a few seconds of each other, with, surprisingly, the import drill edging ahead 51 to 53 seconds. So whilst that result was unexpected and somewhat impressive, I think a lot of that was down to the shank. You know, the import has flats to help the chuck rip onto it, whilst the frost doesn't. And the shank, well, it is tiny. So I really couldn't push as hard as I wanted to, but at least on equal grounds, on equal tests, the Chinese drill did come out on top. Except, well, it's never that straightforward because I did have to do that test at 400 RPM because that is all the import one could do. However, the frost bit could easily do five or 600 RPM, which is what it should be able to do according to the book. And the result is we can easily run it at a higher RPM and do a much faster cut. You know, just running it at 600 RPM chases about 10 seconds off the hole. And I could probably shave a lot more time off the hole if I ground three flats onto the drill bit so I could get a better clamp onto the shank. Now here's the thing, I don't exactly know what they used to make these drills, but whatever it was, it's not a high quality steel, you know, which isn't too surprising. I would assume that it is a high speed steel because it's not losing its temper as I drill, but it's definitely not a high quality grade. And for what it's worth, only one of these drill bits has high speed steel stamped on it. The other ones have stamps referring to alloys that I've never heard of. This one here says it's made of WW525, if that means anything to anyone. I couldn't find much online about it, but it's definitely not an alloy that I've seen before. 
Point being though, it's not M2 high speed steel, which is really the minimum grade that you'd want for a good cutting tool if you're doing steel. But obviously M2 grade is expensive and you wouldn't expect to find it here. And this stuff here, I don't know, it's definitely not as hard as a good quality drill and when things do get hot, I don't know, it feels like it's starting to get soft and sticky. And it does that in a way that I've never experienced on any good quality drills. And you know, just for kicks, I have pulled out my Swiss hardness files. You know, each file is a certain hardness and it does give us a rough estimate for the hardness of a metal. So on the frost drill, you know, even the 65 Rockwell Seek hardness file won't bite into us. You know, this thing is incredibly hard and that's gonna be the same for most of my drill bits. But for the cheap stuff though, well, the 65 Rockwell C file is biting in. So this stuff is definitely softer than that. Now, how much of that is the heat treatment and how much of that is the material itself? I'm not exactly sure, but that definitely is playing into the final machining that we're getting. But hey, at least they are cutting. After a bit of regrinding, but yeah, they are cutting, which leads me here. You are going to see these on the channel in the future, but the ones that are getting used the most are going to get replaced first. Which was really the plan all along. You know, in doing so, I do know which sizes that I will need to spend my money on. On a final note though, I do want to quickly point out that, you know, I couldn't have expected all that much from them. You know, I do realise I only paid 40 bucks for this set, and there's only so much I could expect from them. But you know, sometimes you do get more bang for your buck when it comes to these import tools. You know, the mini lathe for example, I think I got a pretty good deal for them. But this time when it comes to these drills, well, that wasn't the case. These tools weren't all that expensive and they weren't all that good. I'm going to spend the next hour or so getting the rest of the drills into working condition. Until next time though, thank you very much for watching. See you next week.